Now that was an all-time comeback and an all-time collapse. The Milwaukee Bucks claw all the way back and beat the Celtics in Boston, sealing the deal with a couple of majestic Drew Holiday defensive plays at the end. The Holiday block on Marcus Smart, up one, under 10 seconds to play. As you just saw, that's a defensive play for the ages. Out of nowhere, flying through the air like out of a movie. And then to steal it, to close it? Holiday becomes the first player in 25 years to get a steal and a block in the final 10 seconds of a playoff game. And this is why I have always considered him a star and a difference maker. Truth be told, I thought this game was over. It's the Celtics. It's in Boston. Celtics always play their best when it matters the most, right? Boston was up 86-77 after three. They got outscored 33-21 to in the fourth. I thought it was over after the third. I thought it was over after Al Horford's dunk with 2-12 to go to go up six. But then Giannis hit a three. Holiday hit a three. And suddenly it was tied. And it was insane. And also just getting started. After Tatum hit a couple of free throws, Giannis got fouled. You know he wasn't going to make both. I mean, he was literally bloodied and bruised and, by the way, a terrible free throw shooter. Giannis missed the second, and it turned out to be gigantic. Marcus Smart and Jalen Brown collided into each other, and Bobby poured his power through for a putback to seal the deal in the comeback and give the Bucks the lead for the first time in ages with just 11 seconds to go. Smart lamented after the ball game that Boston got outwilled, and they did. It was stunning. It was alarming, and I was dead wrong on the flow and the result, and perhaps I was wrong on the champs, on the DNA of the champs. I haven't given Milwaukee the ultimate love this postseason. Why? Because of the Chris Middleton injury. It's huge. But Giannis Antetokounmpo was not going to be denied. What a ball game. It needs to be celebrated. 40 points, 11 rebounds, insane domination and determination. He was literally bleeding like he was a heavyweight fighter on the ropes, which in a lot of ways, he was. Giannis had the mentality of, this is my trophy. I won it last year. I have it. I'm not giving it up. So impressive. So incredible to watch. Milwaukee deserves all the credit in the world. But, frankly, at home, with an act all year of playing their best when it matters the most, I would call this a Boston collapse. It was a choke. The winner of this series has a great chance to win the entire thing. I still think Boston can beat Milwaukee. If they don't, they will never forget the disaster of last night. To call that embarrassing for Klay Thompson and the Warriors would be the understatement of the year. That was the biggest hot garbage letdown and disappointment I've ever seen. Look, I'm not a masochist. I don't like pain. I don't rubberneck if I see a car accident. I couldn't stop watching. The Grizz up by 55 at one point. I laughed out loud as the great Iron Eagle said with the perfect tone and inflection, the Warriors have cut it to 50. To 50! The Grizz had five players over double figures with points in the first half alone. That's crazy. And they're doing this without John Morant. 21 and 6 without John Morant in the lineup this season. It, it defies logic and common sense and sports and sound thinking. Ja is excellent and team oriented and he closes games and it's all just wild times. And a wild scene last night in, in Memphis. They were loud. They were dancing to whoop that trick. It was sheer insanity. I said Warriors in six. I'm going to stay with Warriors in six. But that was a startling, grotesque no-show of epic proportions with a chance to close out a playoff series. I've never seen anything quite like it. The entire NFL schedule is going to be released tonight, but today it was NBC's turn to look at nuggets of a great game. And Sunday Night Football is going to have the Chiefs and the Bucks in Tampa. The first Sunday in October in a Super Bowl 55 rematch at any time, you get Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady in the same game. It's must-see TV. I love it. Two legends, two stars, the greatest of all time, and perhaps his heir apparent. 
And with Brady's new Fox broadcasting deal, this could very well be the final time we see these superstars go head to head. I clearly think the Bucs are better for this season, better in this game, better big picture, more likely to make the playoffs. Mahomes is Mahomes, but there's no Tyree Kill. And listen, Brady's going to have his usual suspects. I mean, look at these unbelievable weapons around him with Evans and Godwin. Don't sleep on what Russell Gage is going to bring to the table. And oh, by the way, no Bruce Arians, a huge positive here too. Todd Bowles was a prerequisite to Brady coming back, and he wasn't playing for BA again. And for all the reasons I've documented before, I think Todd Bowles is going to be so much better for Brady because he's more buttoned up than Bruce Arians. I really think, and this should be the backdrop and the mindset here, this is going to be Tom Brady's final season. That's my take. That's my prediction. He has a reported $375 million contract waiting from Fox. He has always said he's playing until he's 45. He's turning 45 in early August. Puts a lot of pressure, I might add, on the Buccaneers to make it work and win another Super Bowl this year. I don't think either the Chiefs or the Bucks are going to be back in the big game, but I think Tom Brady's team will outperform Patrick Mahomes' all year and head-to-head. -head. Chargers general manager Tom Telesco simply outstanding on my Sirius XM radio show today, and I love that right there from Tom Telesco. We need to prove to people what we can do. And that that's a money quote because I talked to him about the offseason, which has been terrific, and the moves that he's made. And it's dreamy when you consider all the defensive talent. And we were able to dive deep into J.C. Jackson and Khalil Mack and the defensive linemen. And it's awesome. But Tom Telesco said, look, we haven't won anything yet. And we have the chip on our shoulder that we need to make the playoffs. So, look, someone like me, and I am, could pick the Chargers to win this historically amazing division. But for the Chargers, it's all about taking that next step of getting to the playoffs. And he stressed, look, Chiefs are the favorites. Kansas City is the team to beat when you look at the division because they've done it before. And listen, Zion Johnson was an amazing pick in terms of the first round. He's going to play on the offensive line for Justin Herbert. And Justin Herbert is going to be well protected. They have beefed up the offensive line last year with Lindsley and free agency. Slater, who was phenomenal, left tackle. Now Zion Johnson. Justin Herbert is just incredible. And he's off to arguably, if you watch the games, look at the stats, greatest start for any NFL quarterback in the history of the game. Listen, I think Telesco has put together a team that can genuinely be top five in offense, top five in defense. I look at the Chargers as the team to beat the division winner in the AFC West, and that division is loaded, and I expect the Chargers to eventually play this year on Championship Sunday, but I love how humbled, how hungry, how motivated this incredibly talented team is going to be for this season. Great stuff out of Tom Telesco. Happy NFL schedule release day. I am so fired up. And listen, we've been talking about the primetime schedule for week one literally ever since the Super Bowl ended. And I've made this case forever on time to shine. It's got to be my guy, Josh Allen, against my guy, Matthew Stafford and the Rams for a variety of reasons. Look, Josh Allen is must-see TV. Obviously, Matthew Stafford and the Rams, they are raising a championship banner. It is going to be an unbelievable scene in Los Angeles. You can't schedule the Raiders. You can't schedule the Cowboys, because frankly, they still have more fans than the Rams in Los Angeles. So Buffalo, obviously, has an amazing ability to dominate this year. And this could easily be the Super Bowl. This is what should have been the Super Bowl last year. And I think that you are going to see the Buffalo Bills and the LA Rams meet in the Super Bowl this year. So that's what I would do for the first Thursday night game. 
I would put the Russell Wilson, and I've been screaming this since the trade, Russell Wilson in Seattle game as the Monday night game to start the season. And listen, Seattle's going to be dreadful this year. So get that game out of the way in prime time early. Give Seattle one primetime game max and let it be Russell Wilson's return. Obviously, a legend goes home. And for Sunday night football to start the season, I'd love to see the Cincinnati Bengals. Give me a Bengals-Ravens game. That would be outstanding. So that's what I would do if I was running the NFL. I'm not. I'd go Bills-Rams Thursday night to start the season. Bengals at home against the Ravens. And I would go with the Broncos, the Russell Wilson return game in Seattle. You know we've been talking about that for months here on Time to Shine. I can't wait for the schedule release coming up in two hours from now. The Miami Dolphins offensive coordinator Frank Smith says he's really encouraged with what he's seen from Tua Tagovailoa this offseason and that's great because you know Tua was getting mocked and rightly so for that really stupid tweet by the Miami Dolphins social media team of this underthrown ball to Tyreek Hill. I mean Tua doesn't need the heat, right? You know, they drafted him over Justin Herbert, and, you know, obviously there are questions about his, his ability. I have zero questions when it comes to Tua Tagovailoa maximizing these weapons. I think Tua is going to be great. I think Hill is going to take the top off the of defense just like he did in Kansas City. This, this Hill and Waddle and Wilson trio at receiver is going to be off the charts. Love the running back group. Mike McDaniel is the new head coach and calling the plays, the attitude, the swagger that's needed. Listen, I'm very high on the Miami Dolphins and you can take your two of hates and you can shove it in a sack, okay? I, I don't want to hear it. I think Tua Tagovailoa is going to have a monster season and I can't wait for him to shut up the haters and the critics. And I can't wait to see the Dolphins schedule coming up in a couple of hours. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell for more videos.